Today we have to deal with a whole bunch of fiddly bits and pieces and push this build towards the start of the painting process. First I want to reshape the upper portion of the nose and for that I will laminate a sheet of plastic over the kit plastic. For me this is a better approach than filler when material needs to be added in order to get the desired shape. To sand down the plastic a set of good quality files is essential. Recently I got a package from Hobbyzone Poland and those files were inside among other things. I will leave a link in the description should you wish to check them out. The file did a great job removing the bulk of the material in a very controllable fashion. Then I continued to contour the area with sandpaper. The joints along the fuselage were also sanded smooth in no time with the help of the file. When using files, the pressure on the tool should be kept at minimum, otherwise some deeper gouges may occur. Another area that needed reshaping was the trailing edge of the tail. It was very thick and out of scale but I managed to get it down to a presentable thickness. Next up comes a guide coat in the form of flat black paint. This will also be the interior color of the canopy frames. So naturally it will cover the frames and all surfaces that need any kind of sanding. Obviously sandable paint should be used for a guide coat. Otherwise, it ain't gonna be a pleasant experience. I left the paint to cure overnight and came back with the finer sandpaper grits and some water. As you can see, the guide coat does a perfect job of highlighting the low spots. As a rule, when I use guide coat, I sand it down completely from the whole surface. Then if something is left it needs filling and the process repeats itself until satisfactory results have been achieved. In this case I managed to sand enough material down to eliminate all low spots. The leftover black spots you can see are in fact the black CA glue I used as a filler in the previous episode. Now everything looks good and it's time for a layer of surface primer the Mr. Surfacer 1500 in this case. It is capable of filling small imperfections, so if anything else needs fixing, there is room for that. Using 3mm wide vinyl tape wrapped around the nose, I will guide the Tamiya scribing saw to reinstate the panel line that marks the joint between the nose cone and the fuselage. I opted to use this tool instead of the MRP scriber due to the variety of materials underneath the primer layer. It is a much more secure approach to saw through instead of scraping. All looks good now, so let's move on to the next issue at hand which is the transition between the windshield and the fuselage. Not only the joint is not good, but also on pictures of the real aircraft, it can be clearly seen that there is an overlapping panel reaching the gap between the fuselage and the windshield. So I outlined the panel with vinyl tape and carefully filled the space with Mr. Surfacer 500. I did not want to spread the filler on the windshield, so I was extra careful at application. Then with sandpaper I sanded down the filler until all the tape was revealed. At this point it is safe to remove the tape and enjoy the results. The gun barrel ports I had to install off camera because they are very small and the molding is very bad. I lost track of the time spent on those three pieces but it was not fun. I also removed the plastic barrels and those will be replaced with hypodermic needles when the time comes. Same thing applies to the camera gun on the side of the intake, just too small and fiddly to comfortably show the process on camera. 
To improve the wing root joints, first I added some shims to make more solid connection between the wing and the fuselage. Then I sanded away the excess plastic. That was done in small steps at a time, with dry fit checks in between the sanding, so that I don't overdo things. Having the wings fitting somewhat acceptably, I started the riveting. This is a tedious process without a doubt and it is slow as well. But on airplanes, from this era especially, it gives so much texture on the surface that it is worth the effort. Now some people are strongly against riveting for various reasons and I appreciate their point of view. However, I like the way models look when riveted so this is how I do them in many cases. I have a dedicated tutorial on the matter, so if you are interested, I will leave a link in the description of this video. In summary, first of all, we need some riveting plans. In some cases, they can be found on the internet, often in low resolution. There are better options in the form of reference books, like the one on the Arado 234 that I reviewed some time ago. In any case, I am adapting the rivet plans rather than trying to replicate them on the model. Some kits don't get all the panel lines correct as well, so this can throw you off in the wrong direction. To draw the rivet lines I use a white vinyl tape wherever possible. The wider the tape, the less of a chance it has to bend and curve a line that should be straight. Here I'm riveting over primer. This allows me to use watercolor pencil to draw the lines. The advantage it has over the regular pencil is that it can be easily removed with wet q-tip, in case you want to correct something or just remove the lines after the work has been done. Although my riveting wheel is quite small, I was still not able to reach in the corners. So here I had to use a needle in a pin vise to poke the rivets. Not the most accurate way, but still better than unfinished rows. I managed to do a rather substantial mistake with the riveting. I'm not going to reveal that, but if you can notice what is wrong, leave a comment. After the riveting was done, I sanded down everything with a 3000 grit sanding sponge. This will remove most of the raised portions of the rivets and also will make the primer much smoother, which will be beneficial for the painting stage. Next I applied a dark grey panel line accent color from Tamiya over all panel lines and rivets. This will show all imperfections and also it will help the camera better capture the results. But probably the most important benefit is that this enamel wash will melt the fine primer dust and essentially clean the rivets. The horizontal stabilizers have absolutely no location aid. I can drill holes and use a pin to do that, but I always have issues with alignment. So I decided to get both surfaces flat with help from the hobby zone file. And since the stabilizers are not that heavy, I will only use cement to hold them up. How will this work with the handling in the future, I don't know, but it will have to do. Again, using cement, I installed the wings as best as I possibly could. Although I put a lot of effort in this area, the wing root joint will need some work. I will be doing that off camera as I find it extremely boring. There are a few more things to be done before painting, but all of that should be done in the next episode. Until then, happy modeling, fellas!